Greetings, Omnion Slice, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the unlockables in the Resident Evil franchise. This is going to be my own opinion based on the games that I have played, so that means I will not be talking about the games I haven't played. Also, this is not a best or worst guide, it's more like a it's more for entertainment, what my opinion is, so hopefully you can understand that. So don't get mad at me if I don't put your favorite thing at the top. You know, it's not based on what's good or not. It's more mostly my own preference. And, you know, I will take that into account, what's good and what isn't. But this isn't a best unlockable to worst. This is just my own personal preference. So I'm going to go in order from the you know, in order, chrono chronological order. So we're stuck for Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village. So in case you haven't played, Resident Evil Village released in 2021, I believe, and it had a bunch of unlocks, but a lot of them weren't the best. So let's go from worst to best. In my opinion, the best unlock in Resident Evil Village is the lightsaber. I'm gonna put the lightsaber on S rank. Now to unlock the lightsaber in Ari Village, you have to get double S rank on every single stage of the mercenaries, excluding the DLC. The mercenaries isn't the best mode in Resident Evil Village. Uh, it's actually quite tedious, but if you're looking to get the S, S rank on every level of the mercenaries, you can check out my guides. I did a bunch of guides for the mercenaries, so check those out. But speaking of unlocks, for me, an unlock or a bonus reward in Resident Evil First and foremost has to be fun because usually unlocks are things that require a lot of work, a lot of effort, right? Or they're challenges that are very difficult. And the lightsaber is a good example of that. Although it's not the best weapon, it's a good reward for putting a lot of effort, right? It's a fun thing to use. It's not the best, like I said, but it's really fun to do a playthrough with just a lightsaber and getting the knives out achievement, which means you only are allowed to kill enemies with melee weapons. And I think the lightsaber is great. The only downside is it's super slow. You can't really switch between modes that fast. If you put it out or if you change weapons, you have to constantly hold it and activate it again. It takes like five seconds. It's Kind of tedious, but it's at the end of the day, it's really fun. Anyway, next up in our village, we've got the US or SMC or something like that. This weapon is just terrible, it's a pistol, pointless. Uh, I, don't, I, I just don't like it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Chris's pistol. Um, it's just really bad, it's not, it's not worth it. Save your points for something else. Uh, next up, we've got the rocket pistol. Uh, same thing with the rocket pistol. The rocket pistol was a weapon that you could unlock with points, you know, the challenge points or CP, which you get for completing challenges in the game of Resident Evil Village. It's not the best. It's cool, funny, unexpected. It's actually a real weapon. It exists in real life. It doesn't fire explosives. It just fires rounds that are rocket propelled. So it's a cool concept, but it's not really, it's pointless in my opinion. Um, same thing, I feel the same way about the the assault rifle. The way you get the infinite ammo in Resident Evil Village is by fully upgrading a weapon in a playthrough. And fully upgrading weapons takes a lot of money, like a lot of time, a lot of grinding to get the infinite assault rifle in Resident Evil Village, you have to purchase it for 60,000, I think, CP. But anyway, it's just not a good weapon. I guess it helps for Village of Shadows, but really, if you get the lightsaber or the grenade launcher, which isn't included in this, you really don't need any other weapon. So it's pointless to upgrade, spend six to 11 hours on a playthrough, trying to collect enough money when you can just finish the game purchase the grenade launcher, since it doesn't have any f upgrades in the merchant, you can fully buy immediately the infinite grenade launcher upgrade with zero CP in the bonus content shop. So there really is no point in using anything else. These are just regular weapons that do exactly the same that other weapons from the base game would do. So I think it's very, very bad to put these weapons as bonus weapons especially since they are not really unlocks, they're just things that you unlock with CP. Next up, we've got the Infinite Stake. The Infinite Stake, uh, once again, the same thing, is amazing. It's one of the best weapons in the game, if not the best weapon in the game, but also requires like a 
frick ton of money. So a lot of grinding, a lot of pointless waste of time. Um, it's not that fun to collect money in Resident Evil Village. So that's why I'm putting out an A. Uh, but it is definitely a good weapon. It's not necessary to get, a, you know, complete Village of Shadows, which is, you know, the ultimate achievement in Resident Evil Village. Uh, so really just use the grenade launcher. There is no point in wasting time upgrading a Magnum to get it infinite. Uh, I'm not too sure what this weapon is. I believe it is the sniper rifle that Chris's Chris's men use in uh, the prologue or, you know, the epilogue, the, the ending. Um, I just never really cared too much for it. So uh, the Karambit knife. Uh, Karambit knife is fun because it adds a different type of gameplay. That's why I'm putting it ahead of these other weapons. It's not the best. Um, it's a knife. It's just a knife that deals more damage. It's Chris's knife. Uh, I'm putting it on B because, you know, it's a bonus weapon. And like I said, bonus weapons have to be fun first and foremost for me. I don't care if they don't deal that much damage. Um, but yeah, seeing how this weapon is not that great, I'm putting it on B, but it is fun. Next up, we have the hand cannon PZ or PZ. This is the hand cannon of this game. It's a magnum. It costs a crap ton of money to fully upgrade. It's not particularly that good. Once again, pointless to get if you already have a grenade launcher that's infinite once again my own opinion you can have your own opinion but if you only care about weapons in terms of damage this is a pretty good weapon to try but after like five minutes of playing with it you'll realize this is, is just a waste of time i could have done this with you know the stake or something else uh i think that's all of the village unlocks Okay, so next up, Resident Evil 7. So let's start with the glasses. I think the glasses unlock in Resident Evil 7 is one of the best unlocks ever. Not because it's only great, but it's also super fun. I, I love the idea of the, the glasses or the spectacles, whatever they're called. You can see items through the wall. So if you play Resident Evil 7, you're familiar with the yellow pills or the psychostimulants. The psychostimulants allow you to see items through walls if you're close to them. So if you're in the general area for like a minute or two or, you know, around 30 to 60 seconds or so, um, which is a minute. So I think it's amazing to just have an unlockable that you get for beating Madhouse, I believe, uh, that allows you to always have this effect. And I think that's super fun because it's in amazing and that's another depth to another reason to play, you know, more depth and another reason to play the game. So I really, really like this and it's perfectly describes the definition of a bonus weapon to me. It adds an additional part of gameplay and it's fun, right? Uh, the shoes, the running shoes, uh, I'm gonna put them on the same level as the fin infinite stake because the running shoes allow you in Resident Evil 7, allow you to run faster. They're, you know, they're not mind blowing, but they're just nice to have, right? And, and it's really cool, but it's not, you know, amazing. So I think this is the manual. Once again, this allows you to have it in Resident Evil 7, have this in your inventory and you take less damage, or I think you deal more damage. Maybe you take less damage. But once again, it it takes up inventory space, so it's not that great. It's not that big of a deal. I personally don't like making the game easier in terms of how much damage I take. I don't think it's necessary, but it's good to have if you're, you know, bad at the game or if you're just trying to breeze through the game or if you're doing an infinite weapon run. Um, or, you know, like I said, I'm putting it on B because it's just meh. Right, it's not that great. It's not something I would prioritize in, in when it comes to unlocks. Uh, so the pistol. Once again, this is slightly better than the B stuff because I think this pistol is the main reason. The Albert, right? This is on RE7. The main reason, the main weapon that I used in the Resident Evil 7 Madhouse run. So Madhouse is like nightmare. It changes locations, enemy encounters, and uh, enemies deal more damage and take more damage before they can die. So the Albert weapon is the weapon of choice designed for you to play through Madhouse with. Same thing with the grenade launcher in Ari Village, how Village of Shadows was designed around the concept of you having the infinite launcher, the grenade launcher. Um, the Albert weapon deals extra damage, but it isn't fully broken. You know, it's not super, it's not infinite and it's not super powerful, but it's a weapon that is very, very useful in madhouse difficulty so that's why i'm putting on a it's pretty good it's not essential but it's definitely really good uh it's probably a weapon that you won't use after your madhouse playthrough with it 
Next stop. No matter how's difficulty. Uh, next stop. Uh, let's see if I can find another RE village. Unlock. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know what this is. What is that? I don't recognize this. Is this another deal damage thing? Okay, I don't. I have. I haven't experienced that, so I won't judge it. Next up, uh, so Resident Evil 6. I haven't played Resident Evil 6, so I won't judge Resident Evil 6. Next up, we have Resident Evil 5 then. So let's talk about Resident Evil 5. So we've got the Hydra. Um, well, the Hydra is a shotgun in Resident Evil 5, the original, uh, that you get for fully upgrading all of the shotguns, I believe, in the storyline. You unlock it by you know playing the game, basically. And it's the best shotgun in the entire game. It definitely changes the gameplay because it allows you to have a super powerful three barrel shotgun, sawed off shotgun, and it's amazing, it's good, but it's not mind blowing, it's just a gun. That's why I'm not putting it on S+. I put it on the same level as, as the lightsaber because it changes my gameplay a little bit and it's just really fun to get because you get it while playing, right? So it's just a no brainer to put on S. But it, you know, it's, it's not super amazing. Okay, so. Uh, Resident Evil 5, let's see. So we've got Sheva's Bow. So in terms of weapons, the Sheva's Bow is fun, cool. Uh, I'm going to put it on the same level as the Running Shoes and the Infinite Stake because it's an infinite bow that you get in Resident Evil 5. It's infinite, it deals a lot of damage, but it also you know, has the same, def the same downsides to what, what a bow would have. So it's super slow it doesn't really have that much range because there's bullet drop off and it's it changes the gameplay enough for me to care about it right so i i'm putting it on a because of that because it's a bonus weapon and a bonus weapon should be different and fun and i think the bow can be fun to do a playthrough with but it's not super good that's why i'm not putting it on these levels right okay next up uh, i believe this is also a gun in resident evil 5 uh, I don't recall this being any good. Uh, I think this is the, the three round burst weapon. Um, it's just a pistol, you know, I'm just putting it on C, it's whatever. Uh, okay. So for Resident Evil 5, I think that's it. I think Resident Evil 5 has way more unlocks, but I think, I don't think this person included them. Um, okay. So, uh, so Resident Evil 4 remake. Okay. Resident Evil 4 Remake. For Resident Evil 4 Remake, I'm gonna start with the chicken hat. I'll put the chicken hat on... I'll put the chicken hat on A, on B. The reason for that is the chicken hat allows you to take less damage, right? If you're wearing it. You unlock the chicken hat by getting an S plus on Hardcore in Resident Evil 4 Remake. By getting the S plus, you have to finish the game in under 5 hours and 30 uh, on a brand new playthrough. And you get the chicken hat. The chicken hat is good, I guess, if you're a bad player, if you just want to have that extra security, right, if you're trying to go for S+, plus on professional, it's good, but it doesn't appeal to a player like me, um, I don't like taking less damage, and I think as a reward, it doesn't change my gameplay enough for me to care about it, right, remember, bonus things should change my game and be worth it, right, in terms of hardcore S plus, it's not that difficult to get, so I'm okay with this being a hardcore unlock. Um, does it matter? No, I don't think so. Because at the beginning, if you're playing professional, you're still gonna be a two shot or three shot, right? With the chicken hat, it's the same. It you you're gonna want to be a full health no matter what on professional. So uh, at the beginning, you have very little health. So um, even if you have the hat, you're still gonna heal after one or two hits, right? So. I, don't, I think it's pointless to have, but you know, it does help. That's why I'm putting it on B. It does help if you're really trying to be picky about it, but it, it's not absolutely not essential at all. It's not. You don't need the chicken hat at all to get S plus. Trust me. You really, really don't. Next up, we have the deer antlers. The deer antlers in Resident Evil 4 Remake allow you to deal extra damage with the knife. And I absolutely love that because once again, if it changes my gameplay, I like it. That's how it is, right? I've always wanted to do a knife-only weapon right, uh, uh, run, but uh, the knife always deals very little damage in the new games. So this allows you to fulfill that. And, I, and it actually changed my gameplay a lot. I actually had a lot of fun trying to do this, but it is unfortunate because you cannot finish the game only doing knife. Because at the water hall level, you are going to have to shoot some enemies. So... Yeah, it's you can't do pure knife, unfortunately, on RE4. 
but they're not amazing. That's why I'm putting it on A. It's a generous A. There we go. It's a generous A, otherwise it would belong on B. But since I don't like the chicken head, <laughs> I'll put it on, on A. Anyway, um, next up we have the gas mask. So a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. The gas mask. The gas mask as a PC player, it has no effect <laughs> for me. It doesn't really help. Uh, but on console, I will admit, it does help for those people who are really bad at shooting or they don't realize that they can change their aim sensitivity so they're super slow or they struggle or, you know, older people who are slower, you know, whatever. It's a good thing for other players. Just because it's bad for me doesn't mean it's a bad item. That's why I'm putting it on B because when I played on console, even though I'm a good player in my eyes, it did help for instantly locking onto weak spots like El Gigante, you know, it locks onto the, the Plaga. It's helpful for that kind of thing. Is it essential? Absolutely not. You don't need it. Does it help? Meh, I guess a little bit. If you're like super bad at aiming, sure. But only if you're super bad at aiming. Otherwise, don't use it. it it's a hindrance sometimes because it moves your, your aim around, right? So it has auto lock. Um, so it's not that great. Next up, the wolf tail. Uh, I'm putting the wolf tail on C because the wolf tail is cool, fun, but doesn't change my gameplay at all. It almost feels like it's not doesn't have that much impact on my game. It allows you to deal more damage with kicks. Uh, it helps if you don't have anything else. You know, all, all damage is always good. So I'm putting it on C because it can help, but it's not essential. I don't think. Definitely better than, uh, you know. It, whatever is below T or C. Okay. Next up, on Resident Evil 4 Remake, we've got the hand cannon, which I'm putting on D. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay? Don't get me wrong. The hand cannon is very powerful, but it's slow, it costs a lot of money to upgrade, or the exclusive upgrade ticket, and you can, which you can get at the Chapter 7. Is it worth it? Mm, sure. I just it's just a really bad weapon. You really don't need any any bonus weapons to get S plus. In fact, you can get S plus with just the SG09 starting pistol, which is ends up being better. You get a bunch of money in professional, so you get to have it even, you know, before the Bella Sisters fight if you do everything correctly or if you sell everything. The hand cannon is inaccurate, very inaccurate. Uh, you end up spending more time trying to line up your shot than actually, you know, killing them, killing the enemies with just a pistol. So is it good against bosses? It's kind of meh. It's super slow, so you end up taking extra damage. It's just not that good. Same thing goes with the Chicago Sweeper. It's a great weapon to help you get S plus with. Um, it's highly inaccurate. It's highly weak. Like, it's super weak. It doesn't deal that much damage. So I'm putting it on C because it's just, it's it definitely helps. Okay, I'm putting it on B. It definitely helps, but it's not essential. There we go. But, you know, there's better weapons. TMP is way better than this weapon. And it's you don't even need it to be the infinite. Uh, next up, we've got, for Resident Evil 4 Remake, they did not include the Primal Knife. But if I, if I had the Primal Knife, I would put it on... Uh, a because the primal knife is the infinite knife right and it's a knife that's pretty good and and it changes your gameplay quite a bit because you don't have to worry about repairing it i don't even know what this knife is um this looks like it's from ari village or something that looks like the regular knife i don't know what that weapon is oh it says combat knife um I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to judge it. Maybe it's RE. I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's talk about original RE4. The hand cannon on original RE4 was way better than the remake. Deals more damage, but it's still slow. So I'm putting it on B. It's not essential. It's just something that changes your gameplay enough for it to be fun. So I'm putting it on B. Same thing goes with the Chicago Sweeper. The original Chicago Sweeper was actually amazing. So I'm putting... Actually, I actually enjoyed it. Now, I'm putting it on the same level as B. It's not essential. It's just a fun thing to have. Um, it's not the best, um, but it's highly inaccurate. But in the, re in the original game, you get the laser sight, so it's pretty cool. Uh, that's my opinion, okay? 
And next up, we have the PRL412. I'm putting the PRL412 on S+, because it's a bonus weapon that one-shots anything in the original Resident Evil game. It fires a laser. It's super cool. It's super fun. It changes my gameplay enough for me to care about it. So it's exactly what a bonus weapon should be like. And I think it's the best. One of the best unlocks. So for Resident Evil 4, we've got the Matilda. Uh, so the Matilda is actually amazing in the remake, so I'm putting it on S. Uh, the Matilda is amazing with cat ears or without. It fires a lot of web, it fires a lot of ha uh, handgun ammo, and it's incredibly fast, and it deals a ton of damage. The only downside to it is that it fires too many rounds, so you need a constant stream of ammo. That's why I'm not putting it on S+. Plus. But it changes my gameplay enough for me to put it on S because it's just a wonderful weapon in and. Yes, I'm talking about the remake one because they only put the original one. So I'm, if it was the original one, I would put it on A just because it's just a good pistol. That's it. All right, Resident Evil 3. The write-in uh, write weapon, um, I'm going to put it on D. Uh, it's a cool concept. It's fun, but it's just not that great. So it's a weapon that only fires if you aim at a weak spot and it fires a beam of electricity. It's incredibly cool, but it's just not. It's just not that great. I wish it was. The hot dogger, quite possibly the worst unlock that I've experienced. It's a knife that lights up corpses on fire or zombies on fire. It's just bad. It doesn't deal enough damage. You end up getting grabbed and it's just, it's a good idea. Badly executed. Same thing with the mop pistol. It's just a pistol. It's infinite. Same thing with a crafting companion. It's all things that you, it's a thing that you could put in your inventory and it'll give you a bonus. For ammo, I think it's just not that great. Uh, it's by the time you finish your nightmare playthrough or your hardcore playthrough, or whatever it is called in, in Resident Evil 3 Remake, you end up having enough points to get something better, like the infinite rifle, for example, which I will put on A rank. This is essential to get to finish Inferno, the infinite assault rifle. I'm pretty sure this is what it is, right? In Resident Evil 3 Remake, it's essential. Much like Ari Village's grenade launcher, it was created to complete Inferno in mind, right? So, so Inferno is a super difficult difficulty. You have to have bonuses, and it was designed for you to have bonuses. Much like in Ari Village, where Village of Shadows was designed for you to do it with an infinite grenade launcher. The assault coins and the assault manual they are pretty good but i'm putting them on b because they take up inventory space um they allow you to deal more damage and they allow you to take more damage before you die um but they take up inventory slots the manual also takes up inventory slots but it allows you to dodge perfectly a lot better and once again, it doesn't, you know, it's super good for getting S on Inferno, but it's not it's entirely, you know, great. If you're using an infinite rocket launcher, you really don't need any of this. That's why, you know, I'm putting them on B. It's not highly essential. I did S rank Inferno without them. So I didn't see a great impact with these weapons, with these things in my inventory. Uh, next up for RE2 Remake. For RE2 Remake, we've got the LE5. Uh, I'm putting the LE5 on A, mostly because I really don't think you need this weapon in RE2 Remake. It's more like a meh unlock, but it's just a good weapon. I'm putting it on A because I'm actually going to put it on B. I just don't think it's a good unlock at all. I don't like infinite weapons. I don't like being rewarded with infinite weapons when I do something that is super difficult, like getting, it's not super difficult, but it requires a lot of effort and mental, you know, planning ahead and a lot of experience, like getting, coming up with a strategy to get S plus on Resident Evil 2 Remake. So I just don't think it's a good unlock. It's not a good weapon, not entirely not necessary, and I don't like it. Uh, I think this is the infinite knife. Uh, we're gonna put the infinite knife. I think this is the infinite knife. I'm going to put the Infinite Knife on S for RE2 Remake, uh, mostly because it's amazing. The knife in RE2 Remake is wonderful. You can complete the whole game only using a knife, and it deals a frick ton of damage on PC, and it never breaks, so it's good. And you get it for from the Charlies, shooting all the Charlies, the Mr. Raccoon, sorry, in uh, Resident Evil 2, and that's cool. 
anywhere. Uh, oh, I forgot about uh, Ashley. Uh, I'm putting Ashley on S rank. Helps a lot. Armor Ashley. She doesn't get grabbed. I don't prefer using her, but you know it's it's super helpful. So I'm putting her on S rank. Uh, all right, we're almost done here. So I think this is the Infinite Samurai Edge, right? Uh, it's just whatever. It's not that great. It's meh. It's the Infinite Gun from Pistol from Resident Evil Two. It helps, sure, but it's not necessary. It doesn't change my gameplay that much, and it's meh. <laughs> I don't care too much. Uh, the minigun, right? So I'm putting the minigun on the same level as the infinite assault rifle. Same principle. Um, you get this from getting S plus on the hardcore, I think, uh, on RE2 remake. Uh, it's something that I wouldn't use, but it changes my gameplay enough for me to care about it. It's a fun, like you had fun with the game. You struggled, now go f have fun, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, RE2 remake is one of those games that I absolutely love and. I uh, seeing myself using an infinite minigun doesn't sound super exciting, but you know, it's fun. So it it's cool. It's like using the PRL. But um I just don't like it me as a you know, as a pure as a, as a Resident Evil 2 enjoyer. I just think it's whatever as an unlock. I would prefer something like a laser sword in a Resident Evil 2 remake to make it for make to make it to make me care about it. Anyway, for Resident Evil Revelations 2 uh the chainsaw it's whatever uh i just don't like that game same thing with the sword actually i'm putting the sword on on b uh so in case you don't know in resident Evil revelations 2 you play as claire and moira moira is a character that you give you you know you give the controller to your friend or your little sibling or you know your sibling and they kind of light up the torch you know with the torch she can't attack she can't shoot basically your partner but if you do, if you unlock the katana, she can attack enemies with the katana, and it deals a lot of damage. So that's why I'm putting on B. It's not essential. It's fun, but it you know it changes the gameplay. But it's not you know incredibly amazing. I just don't think the unlocks in that game are great. Um, nothing much to say about the chainsaw in Revelations Two. Is cool, whatever you know. I just didn't care too much about it. Um, we're almost done. I think these are two. I didn't, I never experienced the Chicago Sweeper on a Revelations two, so I don't even know what this is. Is that a what? What is that? I don't know what that is. Um, but then we have the Resident Evil one, uh, unlock. So the Infinite Launcher, it's fun, it's cool, it's amazing. It changes my game completely. You have to struggle to get it, so it deserves an S plus. Um, next up we have Resident Evil zero. Uh, I haven't tried these. Uh, but I do know they're from Resident Evil Zero, so I'm not going to judge them. But it's an infinite magnum, so I would put put it on A. Uh, you know, I assume the infinite shotgun and the infinite submachine gun are also good, but I'm, I won't judge them. But since I know how the magnum feels in that game, I'm going to put it on the same level as the infinite stake, right? And last but not least, I don't recognize any of the other unlocks here, so infinite ammo. Uh, I'm gonna put infinite ammo on an S. <laughs> I guess this is infinite ammo. Um, and put it in on S. Of course, it's the ultimate unlock in any Resident Evil game. It's fun, um, but I don't prefer it. Uh, it's like this is this is it. You did it right. Kind of unlock. Um, does it blow me away? Not really. It helps for weapons like the Matilda, for example. Um, so I'm putting it on S. Anyway, that's my tier list. I didn't play the other games or I didn't get these unlocks. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Don't go too hard on me. This is just my own opinion. I know a lot of you skipped to this part because I know how tier lists are. You guys just want to see the end. <laughs> you don't want to hear what I have to say. But if you did watch the whole thing, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what your tier list would be. You can find the link in the description. Like, please like my content, like my video subscribe, hit the bell, take care, watch my guides, all of my guides. I have a lot of guides that will help you unlock all of these items in the game, in the various games. So check them out. Surely you will find some in my channel. Anyway, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.